lot that I have here. I uh, have decided to go live tonight with something that I found that I forgot that I had that's been sitting in the rack for just a little bit of time. It is this absolutely, utterly gorgeous um, thing called a DBX286A. It is a microphone processor. Now, tonight you're hearing me directly through this uh, straight into a Personas, into OBS and so on and so forth. Now, look, I love this thing and I'd forgotten that I'd had it. Tonight you're hearing me through a Rode NTG3B, a gorgeous, gorgeous microphone, which I deeply love for voiceovers uh, and other things. But I can try this with an NT1. Uh, this is a typically a radio uh, voiceover processor um, and we're just going to have a little play and have a look at what it does and what it doesn't do and we'll have a listen and hopefully you won't get too annoyed with my voice during this time. Completely unprepared as you can see and you know phones are not on silent. Here goes the other phone. There's phones going everywhere and once again I'll reinduce the oscillation in this camera that I have janked up here to show you this gorgeous thing anyway let's go through this it's got a gain level so it shows you where the line the the gain is it shows you when your phantom power is on or off i'm using the ntg3b without a pop filter over it just because i get a little bit more top end and it sounds much nicer on my voice then we get into this section here this is the compressor section which has two knobs drive and density um drive and density is kind of the way that old um, compressors used to work where you'd actually drive it into a certain thing and you'd then be able to kind of uh, adjust the gain that way density is kind of like a, a combined ratio knob kind of thing and we'll get into that then we've got a de-esser we've got an enhancer which has kind of got like think of this as like the the big bottom um, and apex oral exciter so it's kind of like what that does and it expands to get rid of background noise because quite a bit of background noise in this room and then an output gain trim so you can trim up your bypass and non-bypass signal. So this is the direct sound. Let's have a play and start getting into where it needs to get to. So one of the first things we're going to do is drive. Oh, look at that straight away. Drive some of the um, compressor. Now I'm noticing it's got a slow release on the density knob. Now I'm going to increase the density and we can see it also speeds up the attack and release as you can see by the, no uh, the gain reduction knobs doing their thing. You can also hear all the background noise that's in here. So we're going to turn down the, uh, turn up the expander gate section here to get rid of that background noise. Look at that, gone. It's, an, it's actually got a fixed attack and release. And you can see the threshold kicking in and over. Um, so let's have a play. That's, so that's pretty quick. We've been able to get a, a pretty good tone straight away. Uh, the other thing is we'll put a bit of the high frequency detail. You can hear those. Um, harmonics coming in there very nicely. This is a, a great way to compensate for a non-bright microphone or a, a microphone that has a pop filter. That's kind of good. Uh, let's have a listen to this low frequency detail. Oh, there's the big bottom. There's that radio sound that we like. Um, well, I, I don't need too much bottom. I don't have a very deep voice, so I don't need a lot of um, body or voice stuff down there. Uh, the other thing that's really starting to annoy me is my S's. So let's get some of that de -esser. It's a quite aggressive de -esser, but because it's qu so aggressive, I'm just going to back it off just a fraction. Again, there's no EQ on this except for what we're doing with this device. So there we go. There's a very quick radio sounding voice. Now, simply by changing into a smile, we can hear such a difference in the, the thing. Uh, I'll put that high pass on as well. You can hear that clears it up for my voice. My voice is not very bottom heavy, so um, you don't really need too much of it in here. Uh, but let's have a listen to the before and after. So this is the before. Okay, so we're going to have to level match. So let's level match by turning that down and turning that down and getting it about there. Okay, so this is the direct microphone with no processing because we're in pro processor bypass. I'm going to put the high pass off just so we can hear that. So this is just flat out as it sounds as a preamp. We're going to turn that processing on. We're going to turn that processing on. And all of a sudden, it's much clearer and it's much more warm and radio friendly. The thing that I'm... I'm going to turn that back up so I get a little bit more level in my headphones. The thing that I really like about this and, and why I like this processor is it's really good if you've got people who move around the mic quite a lot. So uh, often people... This is a very directional mic, so not a good example for this. But if, when you've got something more like a Rode NT1, for example, 
or an AKG C214, you know, a large diaphragm condenser or a uh, large diaphragm dynamic. Um, it allows people to move on and off micro bits. So let's sh demonstrate that. So if I move backwards and forwards, it was me moving backwards and forwards in respect to the mic with the processing off, and you notice that it kind of fades away and kind of gets louder. Let's turn that processing back on and I'll move away from the mic. This gets a little bit thinner and I move right onto the mic and it doesn't really get that much more. It just gets kind of squishy. So there we go. That is the DBX 286A, a live stream gone horribly okay-ish. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. If you have any questions about this, I'm more than happy to answer them and uh, happy doing the things that you do. There you go. There's a bit of gear that I'd forgotten that I don't. All right. Have a wonderful evening. See ya. Bye.